when something terrible happens, I like to share a poem with my students in the hopes that it may offer them some sort of comfort or solace. So, in light of uh, recent events, I decided to look for a poem, one that might us might help us feel a little less isolated in this time of social distancing. The president today announced a 15-day plan to slow the spread of the coronavirus pandemic that is turning the nation upside down. You know, if you had told me a year ago that I would be locked inside of my house, I would have told you, interesting, leave me alone. <sighs> Sorry, I know I must look like a mess. I, I booked a haircut. It got rescheduled. All right. So I waited two days, and then I buried Al. Sorry, Al. And then uh, I got the clam things, and then the clouds were over the moon, and then, uh, oh, and then I got the holes, and then, uh, oh, oh, today, can't forget today, the historic discovery of H2O on this frickin' island. stay home. Maybe these verses about isolation can teach us that social life is always about distance, in one way or another. Nothing triggers retrospection quite like isolation. Luckily, we human beings come with tools to help us cope. Poetry, comedy, the ability to reflect on the human condition. The arts can help us come together and beat things that seem, well, unbeatable. So, using the drama, cast away by William Broyles Jr., the prose, inside by Bo Burnham, again, and the poetry <laughs> that best speaks to the pandemic by Seth Perlow, various news articles from CNN, NBC, and the Washington Post, and the poetry, Fugue by Amanda Gorman, and My Apathetic Brain Part Three by Joel Detch, we will examine the effects of forced isolation and how we overcome it. All by ourselves, a POI program, because it doesn't take a pandemic to feel alone, but it certainly doesn't help. All right, brain, let's play word association. Okay. All right, um, <laughs> anger, carrots. All right, you need a makeover. Uh, You look good, Wilson. <laughs> what do you think of my place? <laughs> you know, uh, you don't talk much, do you? Hi, um, welcome back to uh, whatever this is. So I have been working the last couple of months on testing the cameras, testing the lights, and I have decided to try and make a new special. And it's not going to be normal because, as you know, the earth is on fire. So, no audience, no crew, it's just me and my cameras and my crippling depression. And you! And your screens. Just the way that our, um, that our Lord intended. I've got another one, brain. Vegetables. Parachute pants. So thank you. <laughs> and look, I already know this is going to be a little, uh, all over the place, so don't expect incredibly smooth transit. The coronavirus passed 20,000 deaths in the United States on Friday, marking another grim milestone in the pandemic that has upended life around the globe. Truly, these are difficult times. Lots of great poems about social life recognize that isolation plays a role even in our most intimate social moments. For me, feelings of loneliness can arise even when I've got company. Here's a question for you guys. Um, is it necessary? Is it necessary that every single person on the planet expresses every single opinion on every single thing that occurs all at the same time, all the time, every day, all day, forever? Is, is, is that necessary? Or to, uh, to put it another way, can, can anyone just shut the hell up? All right, Brian, I've got one more. <laughs> MC Hammer. Subprime mortgage. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> are, are you even trying? The United States Congress. 
hey, that one actually makes sense. You know what, Gray? <laughs> you can be a jerk sometimes, says the guy playing word association with himself. Touche. <laughs> Surely all the feet on the sofa were mine. We had macaroni for lunch every day. <laughs> Sounds like John Ashbury's been stuck inside for weeks. <laughs> he ends this one with a strange call to absent others. Why am I telling you these things? You're not even here. Compared to 2019, suicide attempts by adolescent girls in the United States rose 51% in early 2021. I just want to say for the record, and you may quote me on this, I do not want to kill myself, I am not going to kill myself, and if you're out there and you have suicidal thoughts and you would like to kill yourself, I would recommend not doing that. End quote. You know, you don't want to kill yourself because, like, reasons. <laughs> you know, I, I've had people close to me kill themselves, and to be honest with you, I did not love that, so, I do funny that I'm saying that because uh, right now I can kill myself for like eight months, a year, however long this, this thing is going to take. I would do it uh, today. By goodbye we mean let us be able to say hello again. If there is a place further than me, I beg you do not come. Your absence has gone through me like a thread through a needle. And everything I do is stitched with its color. The coronavirus passed 800,000 deaths on Wednesday, marking yet another grim milestone in the pandemic. Sobering times indeed. Okay, so thank you. Thank you to all of you for coming out. Um, well, coming out relative. Thank you for watching the Zoom call <laughs> um, and supporting live comedy in these, um, in these unprecedented times. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. These are uh, pretty crazy times. Um, okay, real talk. Um, I'm having this issue lately where every time I look on the news, it's always going on about these, these unprecedented times, right? The, these crazy times, these sobering times, these awful times, these, these lonely times, these isolating times, these horrible, horrible, no good, very bad, awful times, these depressing, horrible times, and I'm like, no, duh, NBC! It's not like it's my life or anything! Whoa! <laughs> okay, you wanna hear a funny story? So, Five years ago, I, uh, I quit live comedy because I was beginning to have severe panic attacks while I was on stage, which for the record is not a great place to have panic attacks, so I quit. And uh, I didn't perform for five years, and, and I spent that time trying to, uh, to improve myself mentally. And you know what? I did. I got better. I got so much better, actually, that in January of... 20, I thought I should start performing again, right? I've been hiding from the world. I should, uh, I should re-enter. And then, the funniest thing happened. If I never return, know that Chuck Nolan lived here for four years. I made these paintings, these are my marks. And then I set out and took my fate into my own hands. God willing. By hello we mean let us not say goodbye again. There is someone we would die for. Do you, do you feel that? That fierce, unshifting truth? That's what love does. It, it makes a fact faced beyond fear, which is that we've lost too much to lose. Okay, so maybe I'm a little depressed. A little bit. So, uh, recently, I have been focusing on just getting up, sitting down, just going back to work. 
and you know that might not help, but um, I guess it couldn't hurt.